Welcome back to Questing Beast, I'm Ben. Today we're taking a look at The Dungeon Dozen by Jason Schultes. I'm definitely late to the party on this one. This book was published in 2014, so eight years ago, but it is by far one of the best books that I've ever read in terms of random tables. Now, you might be asking, how can this be the best book on random tables? We already have the Tome of Adventure design, which covers pretty much everything that you might need in a role-playing game, all organized in a nice format for you to look up. This is not what the Dungeon Dozen is. It takes random tables in a very different direction and is just pure inspiration for Dungeon Masters. Rather than giving you a giant toolkit that you can use to design every part of a fantasy world, which is what the Tome of Adventure design does, this thing is the source of so many great ideas that you put into your current campaign world to juice it up and make it way more interesting and exciting. As the name implies, it is packed full of D12 tables. All of these were taken from the blog by Jason Schultes, where he was posting these uh, D12 tables you know, every day sometimes for years and years. And they, it was one of my favorite things to read in the OSR. Uh, currently, Jason Schultes is working on um, Operation Unfathomable and the Odious Uplands compilation uh, for Kickstarter. I think that's nearing release. Um, but he is an incredibly imaginative writer and is a really good artist as well. A lot of the art in here is done by him. As usual, there are links in the description below where you can pick up the PDF or print versions of this if you want to get it for yourself. Before we dig into the contents though, a quick shout out to today's sponsor. Based on the fantasy fiction of C.L. Moore, who stands as one of the great sword and sorcery authors of the 1930s, Black God's Kiss is a perilous RPG setting for 5e and old school essentials, or playable as a standalone micro game. Through the RPG setting and Moore's original fiction, you will explore forbidden ruins, encounter wretched creatures, and retrieve a weapon of dreadful power, the Black God's Kiss. This box set contains everything you need, streamlined mechanics for enduring cosmic horror in an eldritch pocket dimension, stunning illustrations, custom dice, fold-out maps, a resin mini, and much more. Back now on Kickstarter using the link in the description below. All right, let's dig in and see what we get inside the Dungeon Dozen. All of the art is done by Jason Schultes, Chris Branch, John Larry, and Stefan Poag, whose art is frequently seen around the OSR. And we have our table of contents. They're all just in alphabetical order. There's between one and two random tables on every page. And this goes on and on for like 200 pages. The art is also just really fun. We start off with additional nuisances in the frozen wastes. Perhaps frost giants rounding up mammoth calves to train. Or ice labyrinth of the deranged cryomancer. Or a ghost pack of the king wolf who once ruled these lands. Each of them is, it's fairly gonzo, the tone throughout the whole thing. There's a lot of science fantasy mixed in with the normal fantasy. But what stands out the most to me is how juicy and how gameable everything is. There's a sense of humor about the whole world. And dropping these things into your world often just gives it this spark of weirdness and life that makes the players smile and just rejuvenates your game. Look at some of this stuff. Almost indestructible, villain death requirements. Perhaps they can only be killed yesterday, or they must willingly drink hemlock, or can only be scared to death. Just having one of these in there is going to immediately make your players start planning really creative ways to kill a villain. Or antediluvian relics. Uh, we have an ornately pronged helmet with huge crystalline third eye. Enables two-way telepathy, long-distance mental intrusions, uh, command sub-intellectual creatures like most arthropods, insects, and reptiles. A psychiatric gun launches a med grenades that involuntarily pacify, stabilize, trigger tear-soaked breakthroughs, and may induce psychosis in some subjects. What's at the bottom of this pit? In other role-playing games, you might have a dead adventurer or maybe some gold, but no. In the Dungeon Dozen, you have perhaps it's a fist-sized uh, tunnel to a bustling city-state of the rats, or a hibernating saber-toothed badger clogs the tunnel to the surface. These aren't just random stuff to drop into your world. Almost every entry is a kind of adventure hook. Players could latch onto it and it can take your adventure in a totally different direction than what you expected. Some of these are applicable in pretty much any standard D&D game. For example, there's a series called Before First Level for clerics, dwarves, elves, uh, fighters, magic users, and thieves, all your standard classes. You can just grab this when the players create a new character and see what happened to them before they became an adventurer. For example, if you're a magic user, perhaps you had well-connected parents employed graft and bribery to gain admission into an exclusive training facility or unquenchable lust for power from early age, long list of enemies to one day blast to smithereens. If you're a fighter, maybe you were one of those jerks forever getting into fights for no reason, decided to make a career of it or deserted from an imperial army after seeing too much, will never again fight for a cause, only money. 
but honestly, the goofy stuff tends to be my favorite. For example, those blood-curdling screams off in the distance are actually agonized yelps of new recruits being branded into a bandit organization, or ogres enjoying a game of thumbscrew challenge. The way that I would use this book basically is as a way to punch up an already existing campaign. You have your basic adventure, um, pretty much good to go, and then you can dip into this you can flip to almost any random table and just grab something from there and throw it in. Let's say you're running a standard vanilla dungeon crawl. It's just too boring. You need something more fun. Uh, let's flip to a random one here. Disastrous slash abandoned projects of the gods. Fantastic. Let's just grab something here. Uh, the Cavern of Alternate Physical Laws. Great. Or Multidimensional Observatory. Ruined and flooded during Interpantheon Cold War, recently raised in suspect seismic event. You just drop that into your dungeon and suddenly things are much more interesting. What else we got here? Down the world dragon's gullet, the dragon's formerly secret weakness, the dragon's gourmet night, the menu. Dungeon aesthetic, oh, we need some dungeon aesthetics. Just grab one here. What do we got? Jarring tilts and trapezoidal chambers, angled ceilings and floors, a madhouse, or mind-bending Baroque design, countless sculptures, tapestries, boss reliefs, mosaics depict events of terror and bloodshed. It's really one of those RPG books that can be read purely for pleasure because you can just read this in your spare time and get your brain flooded with fun ideas that you can drop into your role-playing games. Honestly, it's a really great introduction to the OSR in general, because I remember when I first discovered the OSR, really it wasn't the rules that I found particularly interesting or exciting. I mean, it was neat to see old school D&D &D kind of get revived. Um, far and away, it was the fun and crazy ideas that all of these writers were coming up with, uh, ideas for RPGs and for situations in RPGs that I would never have dreamed of, but I wanted to get involved with. And this book just has that in spades. Here's some great tables that you can use in pretty much any standard D&D like game. These are just some new uh, race slash class generators. If you want to go beyond the standard dwarf and elf as class, how about the strongman? Fights unarmed or with the club, feats of strength, must continuously pump iron to maintain abilities. Or a black otter. Swift, sleek, and deadly man-sized intelligent weasels, able to learn use of human weapons with experience. Or a dungeon philosopher that has to defend their thesis for advancement. About a dungeon, right? So you're wandering around there, and you're just collecting philosophical information and theories. It just goes on and on and on and on. It's mind-boggling the number of good ideas in here. Less popular magic items. The lich's current love interest. Magic sword awesomizer. Ooh, what's a magic sword awesomizer? I immediately need to know. Uh, emits gale force winds against enemy missiles fire once per day or maybe hurled once per day with deadly accuracy and significant damage bonus or dazzlingly shiny and selectively reflective opponents cannot look directly at the wielder That's some good stuff mountaintop wonders and perils this monster's got a charming side some oddities of the swamp on or around the mighty warrior's carcass other travelers in the wilderness campaign Here's a list of great clues that you could drop into a corridor to make your dungeon a little bit more scary and investigative. Maybe there's very large fragments of a purple eggshell or a half-melted sword or loose flagstones in floor leading nowhere. Well, going through this whole book would take all day, but suffice to say, it is one of the most entertaining books that I have read in the OSR in a very long time, and I wish I would have got it a lot sooner. I picked this up at a convention recently, and I've been thinking about getting this for years and years, but it kept slipping my mind, and... Boy, was I wrong to not get it earlier. One really nice thing is that at the back, there is a quick reference section that breaks things down by category that helps you find the kinds of random tables that you might need if you're using this more as a toolkit. Also an index here that breaks things down by keyword. It is quite helpful. So that is really nice if you have forgotten what, where that particular um, random table was and you need to look things up. But this isn't a complete toolkit like the Tome of Adventure Design. It's really more for inspiration. But there is so much in here that you are likely to find a table close to what you might need. And it's going to be so fun that even if it's not exactly what you wanted, you will not be disappointed. So that's it for the Dungeon Dozen. As usual, links are in the description below where you can get the PDF or print versions of this. And thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.